Hello, good morning. I hope you have been having a wonderful day there. My name is Dunamis Okunowo, and um, something significant happened in this past week that I would like to briefly intimate to you. Uh, it was at a meeting of um, Generational Shift Special Ministers Conference organized by uh, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria under the able leadership of Bishop Francis Waliuke. So several speakers were there, but at a particular session where Pastor Chingtok was asked to speak, I believe that is the highlight of that day. And uh, his session was supposed to just come up and um, do some music. But I believe strongly that by the Spirit of God, he just was led to begin to ask for forgiveness of um, on behalf of the young ministers from the fathers, as it were. Uh, more like restoring the love and the re relationship between fathers and sons. I, I tell you, it's a powerful moment, and you're going to be seeing the clip in a moment is extremely awesome. Every young minister, every pastor, even el uh, elderly pastors should watch this clip because I believe it's going to bring a healing. And of course, you know, it, it was a powerful moment because uh, uh, Daddy Francis Waluke came up and also apologized on the behalf of the fathers you know, to the sons, and he, of course, he declared some words of prayers that are extremely powerful. If you are in the meeting, you'll understand better what I'm talking about, but if you weren't at the meeting, don't bother, you are not going to miss a lot. Uh, you just need to uh, listen to the clip and really, really get blessed from the clip. So, uh, we'll just... Uh, go ahead and and see that clip it's a very very powerful moment i wanted to pay attention to every word spoken there it's going to be a blessing to you thank you for watching god bless you and please don't forget to share subscribe this is powerful everybody should see this kind of uh, 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 moment where fathers and sons were merged together it was an emotional moment, but beyond the emotions, it was also a spiritual moment. I mean, something will happen in your heart when you listen to it and you watch it with rapt attention. And I'll also suggest that you should take time to pray alongside and just pray from your heart, especially those of us that have issues with one father or the other, or if you're a father, you have issues with your sons. This is a moment that I believe God is bringing healing to our nation and restoring the relationship between fathers and sons. Enjoy watching. God bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for such a time. Thank you for counting us worthy to be part of this generation. You see, I've been thinking and I sincerely, well, maybe I'll do this in a bit. I've been thinking throughout the meeting until Baba Deboy came and in all of my prayer for this meeting from the first day Bishop called us was that we could hear the heart of our fathers spoken to our generation. I had hoped that this meeting would not even be about biblical teaching as it is about the instruction of our fathers to us. And my brother Pastor Jerry came up to lead us to pray and he read that scripture in Hosea. Please forgive me. I have to do this. And in my thinking, there are two dimensions of from glory to glory. It means that the glory of the next generation should exceed the previous. But in 1 Corinthians 15, it also reveals that the glory of the next generation might be different from the glory of the previous. 
And so whatever it is, it will be greater and it might find a different expression. And Baba began to speak. And in honoring our father, the PFN president, and our fathers who come from the previous generation, I want to start by repenting on behalf of our generation. Because it's easy to hear the things we have heard and nod our heads and go home and forget that God expects us to be doers of this word. So, on behalf of our generation, we have said things, we have thought things, we have premeditated things. We have sometimes maybe even in our conceit we have meditated upon things that did not possibly honor the fact that in the midst of whatever seems to be the inconsistencies of our fathers God chose them to sustain and uphold these revival. Sir, this is my generation. And my generation is saying, we repent today. Sometimes out of our sincere zeal, sometimes out of our desire to preserve our purity, we have dishonored or communicated dishonor. This is my generation. I understand the implication of what Pastor Jerry is here ahead. That a generation can arrive at the appointed time and it will not be lacking in gifting because individually we are doing well. We may not be lacking in utterance. Many of us didn't require any fatherly covering to become what we became. We pressed through and came out. Somehow we emerged and maybe it registered in our hearts that we could do without a generation. But today we acknowledge that one generation must command his work to the next. And we acknowledge that God has been gracious to us as a generation. I heard Bishop Mike. When Bishop Mike Okonko was speaking, he said that their generation set out without models in touched places, in really dry places. And they have set a pattern for us that for many of us in less than four or five years of ministry, we are building stuff. We're enjoying graces we didn't labor for. And we possibly in our pride and conceit did not take the time to consider that there's a generation's shoulder upon which we stand. But adventure that will raise our responsibility even to character, like Pastor Podu said earlier. We repent. So, and I'd like to beg that if you would make a pronouncement over our generation right now, to break, because it is obvious that there's a level of spiritual authority we require that we cannot enter into until a generation of the fathers stretch their hands over us. There are national battles to fight. We are thriving in our small places. But if a national question is asked right now, none of us has the shoulder to bear it. And Baba Debo is said, they are passing. I heard it. Our worship today will be 
the unification of the heart of the fathers and their sons so that God does not smite our generation with a curse Paradventure, the practicality of the things that we have heard will begin with our reconciliations fathers to sons brothers to brothers Paradventure, we will start to make ourselves accountable one to another sir if i would beg at the expense of my session in this if you would speak over our generation on behalf of our fathers Stand here today through the mercy of the Most High God, representing the generation of the fathers. We repent. Maybe we have not been patient enough with you. We have not taught you what we ought to. Maybe we have not shown you the secret of our success. We repent. And we extend our hands of forgiveness to you of whatever misgiving, whatever wrong. And we reach out to you in the true love of Christ. To unite with you. That you may take your proper places in destiny. Whatever had been wrong, both with the fathers and with the children, because mercy triumphs over judgment, mercy of God has prevailed. The move of God in this nation will not be hindered. And through you, the move of God from this nation will engulf the world. And your generation shall be God's instrument of global revival. You will not fail. Your generation will be far greater than our generation. would do well. Amen. You will not be hindered. Amen. You will prevail. Amen. The finishing point of our generation will be your starting point. Amen. And you will rise higher. Amen. And 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 higher. Amen. The fire of God's move will never die in this nation. Whatever the enemy 
wants to devise to stop or slow down or hinder the fire of God's revival. God will raise your generation as a standard to destroy and defeat the enemy. It is well with you. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a big hand, please. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um,